sick. No matter what your faith level is. You live long enough, you're going to have some problems because, again, you're living in a fallen world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who among us has never been sick that needed the healing? And if that's not true, then let's rip out James 5.14 and rip it right on out the Bible. Mm -hmm. If be any sick among you, call for the elders of the church, anointing them with oil. And the prayer of faith shall save them and raise them up. And if they committed any sin, ain't that something how he snuck that in there? Because it's that important. If they've committed any sins, it shall be forgiven them. Why? Because they came forth. And they were anointed with oil and pray. That's why we anoint with oil and pray. Amen. I don't know how you live all week long. I don't know what you do. I don't know your thought pattern. I don't know how you think. I don't know if you've cursed God. I don't know if a lot of things. But God's had me to pray. I pray in faith. And I let the Lord work out the rest. Amen. As long as my heart's right towards God and towards you. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then uh, we are we're in good company because uh, I guess if you get sick, Timothy got sick. Mm -hmm. Told him to take a little wine, I'm not for a minute, a little grape juice, because some of you go out and get drunk on me. Come on, take a little wine for your tummy sake, your often tummy sake. Maybe he had ulcers, I don't know, it doesn't say. But he had some stomach problems. Mm-hmm. Acid reflex. Oh, I didn't have that back then. Okay. <laughs> Take two Maylocks and call me in the morning. Glory be to God. <laughs> but he had tummy problems. That's Timothy, a great man of God, servant of the Most High God. Then Paul, we're going to get into him in a minute. How about Moses? Now, <laughs> this is a little different, but I thought it was cute. And it's true. When Moses said, Lord, and he was getting ready to send him to the Egyptians and, and talk, to, talk to Pharaoh, and he said, Lord, how will they know that you really sent me? He said, take your right hand. Put it in your robe. Take it out. Ah! Yeah. Ah! It became leprosy, the Bible said. Leprosy. Can you imagine that? He had leprosy. You don't play with God. Don't doubt God. Don't question God. What am I going to do with that? He said, put it back in your robe. Pull it out. It was like a baby skin. Oh, when it, come on, somebody Amen. praise the Lord. What a God we serve. Hallelujah. He can do anything, anybody he wants, anytime he wants, because he's God. Scripture says that the creation don't tell the creator how to run his business. Come on, somebody. How about Nebuch King Nebuchadnezzar? Amen? Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind because, what, of disobedience. Physically lost his mind, went crazy. Mm -hmm. Because he played with God. And until he repented and recognized the God of heaven to be God all over the earth and everywhere else, he stayed crazy. Mm -hmm. Seven years he was out there like, like some beast, the Bible says. That's right. And that was a king. But pride, remember I said pride? Went out on his balcony one night and said, look at all this that my hands have done. He was a, one of the richest, most powerful kings in all the world at that time. God gave him that power, even though he was a heathen. God gave him that power even to punish his own people, the Israelites, because they turned their back on God. Be careful. Be careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we see he lost his mind. Now, listen to this one. Luke. That's New Testament. Luke chapter 13, verse 16. Remember there it talks about the woman that Satan had bound for 18 years. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. That's right. We don't like to be afflicted for 18 seconds. <laughs> 18 long years. Satan had her bound. Sickness, disease. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says she's a daughter of Abraham. One of theirs. Don't she deserve to be set free? And he set her free from her bondage. God's timing. If you're willing to hang in there and wait on God, you'll receive your miracle. So I've got to wait 18 years. I hope not. <laughs> but I don't care how long I've got to wait. I'm waiting on Him. And He's always on time. He's never early and he's never... Ah, Jesus, I don't know. You folks, I don't know. I thought you were Pentecostals. My Lord, my Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. 
So, so, so does the innocent got to suffer? We talked about that in the beginning. Does the innocent have to suffer with the unrighteous? Does that seem fair? All these people that just got murdered in Walmart and Texas and Ohio, that, that, that innocent people minding their business, just getting things, groceries and clothes, whatever. Does it seem fair? Is life fair? Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 13 kind of answers that a little bit. Verses 4 and 5. Talks there about a tower that fell on 18 souls. Jesus, listen, Jesus, were they more, Jesus said, were they more sinners than any other man in Jerusalem? Those 18 souls. Did they deserve that? He said, no. I tell you the truth. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So the point of that is, sometimes the innocent get afflicted. Oh, oh, really, is there anybody innocent when you think about it? Mm -hmm. So let me put it another way. Even Christians get afflicted and get attacked. We know that. But the point is here, the next verse, was verse 5, where he says, he didn't focus on the 18 souls that the tower fell on and killed them all. Some righteous, some unrighteous. The point is, he said, except ye repent, you will likewise perish. Just like that, you will perish. So the point is, repent. Always make sure you're right with God so when the tower falls, you're ready. That's right. Because it's going to fall sooner or later. That's right. On all of us. Yes. My preachers yes. won't tell you that. That's not real positive. We're all going to die. That's right. That's right. You just better die in faith. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. I deal with people all the time. They never expect it to lose their loved one other than a long-suffering disease or something, we know it's coming. But when it happens suddenly in an accident and all that, that's why we got to be ready. You don't, you, I'm telling you, you just don't want to miss out on God. You can't play with the Lord. you got to be ready and stay ready. Amen? Amen. Amen. And sometimes, we just have to pray and trust God, amen, for His timing. Amen. It's true that Jesus, listen, Jesus can really calm the storms. We know that. We heard it. We see it in the Bible. Jesus can calm the storms. He probably calmed a lot of them in your life. But, He can also cause a storm. Mm -hmm. All the things I just mentioned, God will do anything He has to to get your attention. Yes. Sickness. He'll allow it. We see it. Disease. Mm -hmm. Afflictions. To the greatest, to the least. It doesn't matter. God wants your soul in heaven. Yes. And He'll do whatever it takes to get you there. That's right. Unless you totally reject Him, get turned over to a reprobate mind, and hate His guts. Amen? He'll put up with your nonsense. Amen? He'll love you to the end. But He'll cause the storms in your life to come and exist so that you'll repent and cling on to Jesus. Amen. And when you get to heaven, you say, Thank you, Lord, for the storms in my life that brought me back and put me in my right mind. Because I was running. Amen. I was running. You can't outrun God. Amen? John chapter 9, verse 2. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who sinned? Because the man was blind and diseased. And he said, Who sinned? They didn't know. They asked him. Master, who sinned? This man or his parents that he should be born blind? That's a serious sickness, a disease to be blind. He led around all oh, everybody do. Come on, think about it. And what did the Lord say? Neither him nor his parents sinned. For this blindness was for my glory and that God may be glorified through his healing. Amen. That I can show the world at that time yes. that I am the Son of God and I have the power to forgive sins. I have the power to open blind eyes. I can raise the dead just like he did with Lazarus. Hallelujah. Another story. Yes. New Testament. Lazarus was his friend. That's right. And the disciples came and said, Lord, 
your friend Lazarus lay sick on the death. Yes. Don't you want to go to him? He said, his sickness is not on the death. They couldn't understand that, huh? This is your friend. Jesus said, he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother to us. So when things happen, don't think he abandoned you. Don't think he forsaked you. Amen. Because after that, Lazarus died. Oh my. But what happened after that? He raised him from the dead. Amen. You don't lose with Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. Jesus. Alive or dead. Yes. Yes. Amen. And then the truth of the matter is we really never die, do we? Right. We just change our address. Stand with me as we begin to close. I'll try to finish this up along with the other for next week. But we don't run out of time. Oh, I'll tell you. Time goes by so fast when you're having fun. Amen. 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 All I know is you stay focused on Jesus. If I could give you any last minute advice, keep your eyes on the Lord. Don't get so discouraged, so, so depressed that you want to quit and give up. And definitely do not blame God for your problems. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. He's the only one that can solve them. Amen. You want to blame somebody? Blame the devil. He's the author of evil. He's the author of disease and sickness. He's the author of temptation and a sick and broken world. Blame Him. Rebuke Him. Amen. Not the Lord. He's on your side. But are you on His side? Amen. While your heads are bowed, last question. How many here or how many watching by way of internet, maybe you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior. You, maybe you've learned something today, but you didn't understand the principles, how God operates. Now you do, and you need to trust Him as your Lord and Savior. And if you would like to, I want you to follow us in this prayer. Let's pray it together, church. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. Save my soul, Lord. My soul. I, repent my I repent of my sin, lest I should perish. Lest I should perish. The Lord, Lord, I want you to be my Savior, Lord, the Lord of my life. Lord, I love you. I trust you. Give my life and soul to you. Do what you will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. If you can stay and have some fellowship. And